Ken Clark, and of course, Sir Nick Clegg and others going in. Uh, of course, we had the SNP going there. They've all been going to meet Mr. B- Mr. Barnier. And indeed, even the government representatives that are going to meet Mr. Barnier are not, not, not giving the view of the 17.4 million of us who voted to leave the European Union, to leave the single market, to take back control of our borders and our fishing waters. It was all really very simple. That is what we voted for. took me a long time to get an answer. Initially, he tried to somewhat brush me off by saying he'd meet me in the members' bar in Strasbourg, um, as if I spend all my life in the members' bar at Strasbourg. Well, I spent a bit there, but not that much. Um, but no, I'm going to go and see him at 11 o'clock on Monday morning in Brussels. And I, I've got some questions I want to ask him, but I have a feeling that maybe out there some of you have got some questions you would like to ask him. So I want you to submit your questions. You can do it either by going to my Twitter at Nigel underscore Farage or at LBC to submit your question for the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier. And please use the hashtag Ask Barnier. We'll collate all of them over the next few days. I'll pick out the best three questions from you. I will read them out on air on my show on Sunday morning on LBC. And I will put those questions plus others to Mr Barnier on Monday. And let's hope we get some sensible, positive answers. I'm also very curious to know, who's he representing? Is he representing Brussels and the European project? Or is he acting in the interests of the countries, the companies and the workers of the rest of Europe? Because all of my friends that I talk to across Europe say, do you know what? We want a simple free trade deal with the European Union because, actually, we sell you guys quite a lot of stuff. So it's really in the, in the interests of millions of people across Europe for a good deal to be done. And I just begin to wonder, and perhaps Mr Barney will tell me I'm wrong, but I begin to wonder whether this isn't about preserving the European project and to hell with what it means for the people in Europe or Britain or elsewhere. So that's what I'll be doing on Monday. It's taken a long time. I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. Now today, those very same Ramonas have been out in force. Tony Blair, who I don't think has met Monsieur Barnier, but he did go to Brussels not long ago to meet Mr Juncker, the Commission President. And Blair has been out there today pushing it really hard, urging the Labour leadership to change their policy and to back his call for a second referendum on whether to stay inside the European Union. He, he says that we face a big dilemma Uh, Namely, uh, that, you know, if we do completely leave the single market, we will have to readjust our economy to do so. Uh, He's really hopeful uh, that that, that the whole thing can be reversed. He's also answered a few questions about controversial claims in the book. The book that has led to this war of words between Donald Trump and Steve Bannon. But there's another claim in the book, and the claim is that Blair had actually warned Trump that British intelligence was tracking him during the campaign. Blair, I have to say today, has strenuously denied all of that. But let's listen to Tony Blair earlier on today trying to persuade the Labour Party to take a different view on Brexit. The Labour Party leadership, what they think is that the smartest thing to do is for Labour to carry on saying, well, we're in favour of Brexit too, and then essentially when the government comes out with its deal, say, well, we will get a better deal. When they get to that point they're going to find it very difficult. It's far better to go on to the high ground, say what we really think, and give some leadership to our people. But the reality is, Brexit is going to make their position worse. It's going to put up the standard of living because of the fall in the currency. It's going to reduce growth, and therefore there are fewer jobs and less money to go around. And on the health service, you can see then a lot of them will have voted on the basis, well, we're going to get more money for the health service. But we haven't. We've actually got less. So I think it would be a far stronger position for the Labour Party to be in, to say what it actually thinks, and I think the vast majority of Labour members think that Brexit is not the answer to the country's problems. 
So Tony Blair there telling you that you'll be poorer. Tony Blair, whose economic predictions have always been so wonderfully accurate. The same Tony Blair, who of course told us back in 1990 that joining the exchange rate mechanism was a good idea. It was a disaster. The same Tony Blair, who of course told us we should join the euro. Had we done so, we'd have been in a very similar position to Greece. And the same Tony Blair, who told us that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction that could wipe us out within 45 minutes. Yeah, that's right. That's the same Tony Blair telling us that Brexit is going to be bad for us and the Labour Party should change its policy. And then, of course, Lord Adonis. Not somebody, I think, that was especially well known a couple of weeks ago, but he keeps popping up. And today, Lord Adonis was in this very studio on LBC with Ian Dale telling us openly, in answer to one of Ian's questions, that he actually wants to sabotage Brexit. Here he is. I do respect the people, but my own view is that when they see that the terms, even if they're there. OK terms by, you know, the standards of uh, some of the uh, blood-curdling scenarios that have been put forward at the moment, when they see that it's less good than the status quo then I think that the case simply for saying, look, there's no point to uh, all, all this nonsense about completely rewriting our trade and international treaties, all for the sake of um, making our, our, our trade just, and our, just and our, our be honest about position it, worse, just I, be think, honest. I think all, then we can Your, uh, your entire stop strategy is basically to sabotage Brexit. That's it, isn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm yes. glad, finally, finally, we've had somebody yes. who's had the guts to admit yes, it. Yes, I, I absolutely want to sabotage Brexit, but I do not want to do so in an undemocratic uh, way. My view, because I'm a Democrat, it? I believe passionately in the working of our democratic institutions, I'm a parliamentarian. My own view, which is the reason why I think it will come to a referendum... But you don't is, think we should have re had a referendum in the first place? No, actually... It doesn't it, really tie well, with that, does well, it? No, it well, ad, well, because it wasn't an issue of great concern to the British people. Really? Well, it may not have been a great concern to you, Lord Adonis, but it was a huge concern to a lot of people in this country who were very upset. They'd been lied to for half a century. They'd seen the ability to make our own laws transferred somewhere else. And they saw, through irresponsible open-door immigration, their communities changing, their wages going down. And it's very interesting, isn't it, that both of these guys are talking about economics, making predictions for what's going to happen in the future. I can do that as well. I can say, freed from all these European rules, able to make our own way in the world, we'll be better off. But you know what? They could be right, they could be wrong, I could be right, I could be wrong. What is for certain is that we voted Brexit, um, Lord Adonis and, and, and Tony Blair. We did it because we wanted to govern our own country. We wanted to make our own rules. That is what it was all about. And when Adonis says that I'm a parliamentarian... I don't want to sabotage it in an undemocratic way. What planet's he on? He's in the House of Lords. He's not been voted into the House of Lords. He can't be got rid of by the electorate from the House of Lords. And there's been a convention in this country for over a century that if a government of a day has a manifesto and says what it wants to do, the House of Lords don't go against it. So I'm sorry, him saying he wants to sabotage it, but not to do so in an undemocratic way, frankly, does not hold water. So I wonder, folks, listening to these constant Ramonas, do you have a message for them? I certainly do. If you think maybe they've got a valid point, call me on 0345 6060973. Or perhaps you think a period of silence would now be highly appropriate, in which case you can tweet to 84850. Or perhaps they need to readjust their thinking. Send me some ideas by tweeting using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, watch us on Facebook and comment there too. Tony is calling from Fairham. Good evening, Tony. Yes, sir. Good evening, Nigel, and a belated New Year greetings to you. New Year greetings um, to you, and, and did you listen to the interview with Lord Adonis earlier? I did. I listened to all of it, yes. And, um, uh, well, Barnier Juncker out of Hofstadt must be uh, doing backflips at the moment, falling about laughing, because um, <laughs> they would have listened to that this morning and, and, and thought, uh, uh, I think they must be on the planet Mars, we, we must be on different planets, because he's talking about the democratic vote of the public, which, and the democratic vote of the public, how can you sabotage something democratically? It's, it's, um, it doesn't make sense, you know, what he said, what he said just doesn't make sense to me. No. Um, and and um, I, I, I just, you know, he's committing us uh, to the euro. Why, why are so many people from, from the EU in this country, mainly young people, 
uh, over in this country working in our restaurants and our uh, NHS, uh, bless them, uh, and they're doing so because they cannot get jobs in their own country. Well, the truth um, is, Tony, isn't it, that the euro has actually put many millions of people out of work. I, I, I mean, it's impoverished tens of millions across the Mediterranean. Yeah, yes, yes, of course, it's hollowed out the poorer economies of Europe. You know, and it's also going to commit us to uh, an EU army, which nobody really, I, I think, understands, except perhaps your good self, which will undermine, which will thoroughly undermine NATO. It, you know, Donald Trump can get 2% out of most of them anyway, and, in, and encourage the Russians to increase their interference in the Baltic states. We're also going to get the free, free movement of people and Schengen, and basically what he's doing is undermining our negotiating position. Mm. But, but, but Tony, Tony Blair says that free movement of people is not the problem. Um, well, it is for, for many, many people, including myself, who voted for Brexit. All I want is, uh, is control of immigration. I don't want to stop people coming to the country. Yeah. Um, I, want to stop pe- I want to stop people who, uh, first of all, all are, uh, are a danger to the country, coming to the country, and secondly, those people who, who bring um, um, wealth and, uh, and, and, and uh, good skills to the country, yeah. nothing else. And dare I suggest, Tony, those that will integrate with our society, accept and uphold our values and our culture too. Uh, uh, ab- ab- absolutely so. And I, and I think we're, you know, one of the callers um, uh, to Ian this afternoon mentioned that, that there would be um, uh, public disorder on the streets. And I don't think that's very far away, you know. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Tony from Fairham, I thank you for your call. And by the way, it's the same Tony Blair telling us that open-door immigration that isn't a problem. He was the fellow that told us in 2004 when eight and then ten former communist countries joined the European Union. Uh, and I remember him shouting at me, saying, you know, we should welcome this. It's a good thing. It's going to be great. He told us an extra 13,000 people a year would come to Britain as a result of them joining, and actually hundreds of thousands a year in the first couple of years came into this country. He's been wrong about everything that he said over the last few years, and my message to Tony Blair and Lord Adonis is please shut up. You're boring us, and you're starting to make yourselves look obsessive and really somewhat stupid. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.15. LBC and its sister stations from Global bring you a brand new event. The Global Awards. Rewarding the very best from the world of music, news and entertainment. The Global Awards. And the award for best news moment, interview or debate goes to... One Incredible Night. With performances from Andrea Bocelli and Sam Smith. Performing live. And you can have your say on who will win at the Global Awards. Voting is now open. To vote, download the Global Player app or go to lbc.co.uk. March the 1st, 2018. The Global Awards. It's coming. Philip Schofield's an easygoing kind of guy, aren't you, Phil? Uh, difficult to say. No. Really, you are. And at WeBuyAnyCar.com, we try to be too. That's why there's no obligation to sell. And we've had over a million customers. What do you think about that, Phil? Sensational. I couldn't be more proud. Stop it, Phil. Enter your edge now at WeBuyAnyCar.com. So quick, so simple. So Schofield. Admin fee may apply. For more information, see WeBuyAnyCar.com slash info. Have I got PPI? Want to know if you've had PPI? Find out with our free PPI check. We had claimed back PPI in the past, but it turns out there were some lenders we hadn't checked. The service Stanton Fisher provided was absolutely brilliant. We received over £2,500. But the claim deadline is set for August 2019. So text CHECK to 80800 for your free PPI check. Have I got PPI.com? That's CHECK to 80800. It's Super Weekend at Lidl with up to 40% off selected products. Get a litre of cloudy apple juice, only 59p. A large bag of Swiss-style muesli, just 79p. And Lux Fairtrade Colombian coffee, only 149 Lidl, big on quality, little on price. Subject to availability, and I may vary, selected stores while stocks last. At Home Base, we're all about great value to refresh your bathroom. Take away a complete bathroom, including bath, basin, pedestal, toilet and tabs, for just £208. Home Base, always low prices. Jack here has got Kev on the phone. As a PlusNet customer, he has lots of friendly people that have his back. Say hi, Kev. Hi, Kev. Uh, 
Hi? He can call Plusnet any day of the week. They've already helped him pick a package, upgrade a package, check bills, move home, give him matrix, order the sims, transfer numbers, add a bolts, check his connection speed. And Julie here even helped him settle on Mallorca for his next family holiday. Don't forget the factor 30. Plusnet has lots of friendly staff that just can't help but help. It's probably why they've bagged you which is best provider for customer service award. Plusnet will do you proud. We've travelled, been there, shared rum with the locals. That mountain was near impossible to climb, but we got to the top for sunrise. We've looked over the edge of the infinity pool into the valley below and floated above herds of elephants in a hot air balloon. We can tell you about it because we've traveled it. The Kuoni sale is now on, so pop into one of our beautiful stores for a down-to-earth chat. At Kuoni, our experience makes yours. At all protected. Miss Grady, come on through. GP and nurse appointments are now available in your area during the evening and on weekends. To book an appointment, contact your practice or visit nhs.uk slash GP access for more information. Your NHS, here for you for longer. The Nigel Farage Show, text 84850. Well, Tony Blair and Lord Adonis are out there. They're at it again. They are appearing to me to be pretty obsessive and they're telling us that they want to sabotage Brexit, there has to be a second referendum, and Tony Blair is urging the Labour Party to change its policy. And its policy, of course, it, well, its policy, of course, is, at the last general election, if you're in the north of England, we support leave. If you're, if you're in London and the south, we support remain. It's kind of the game uh, that Corbyn played at the last election. Clearly, the Labour Party have softened their position significantly since the last general election, when in black and white it did actually say we will leave the single market, we will take back control of our borders. They're now in this sort of, uh, maybe we'll stay in the single market for quite a long time in the customs union, but Blair wants them to go the whole hog and argue for a second referendum. Uh, but just one quick thought on the USA today. Um, you'll be seeing, hearing uh, the argument going on between Steve Bannon and Donald Trump, and I spoke about that last night. Hey, it's politics. People fall out. It kind of happens. But something else is going on in the States today. The Dow Jones today went through 25,000. It hit yet another all-time record. Since Donald Trump was elected, the US stock market has risen by 33%, which is pretty extraordinary. I commented, if you remember, the week before Christmas when I was in Washington, D.C., that I'd never seen economic optimism like it in my life. Kind of, you know, the, the, the bartenders, the cab drivers saying the economy is going great. Uh, well, it was said back in 1929 that when even the lift boys were talking about which stocks to buy, the Wall Street crash was going to come very quickly. And yet, some of the best brains on Wall Street, and I've spoken to one or two people today that I've known for years and respect, they're now talking about a different phenomenon. They're talking about the possibility of a melt-up. Yes, that's right. Not a meltdown, a melt-up. They're talking about the stock market going parabolically north, uh, you know, up to some totally ridiculous number. And whether that means it hits 28,000 or 30,000 or whatever it is. But a feeling amongst people that I genuinely know and respect wise people not you know not mug punters not idiots saying to me the stock market is just about to go absolutely crazy but before you all go to the building society and take out everything you've got and put it in there when a market goes into that dramatic final phase and starts to rise in a sort of an almost vertical line do remember that when it falls it'll fall even more quickly so i'm still bullish for the u.s stock market i still think for trump uh, it's terribly good news his approval ratings are now back over 40 percent you know he's back at six month highs on that uh, deregulation uh, the tax cuts all of that is leading to these remarkable numbers uh, but there's going to come a point i think later on this year when the u.s stock market is going to be one incredibly dangerous place to be we'll watch it with interest but back to blair and adonis and do you have a message for them and ross on twitter says calling other people obsessed nigel what a cheek all right ross it's a fair cop uh, i was pretty obsessed with campaigning and pushing for brexit uh, and i did it for year after year after year but have we lost the referendum have we lost the referendum people like me and others that supported the leave campaign would now frankly not 
really even have a platform. Nigel, Lord Adonis forgets that the British people have a chance to reject Brexit at the last general election by voting for the Lib Dems, says Paul from Oxford. Well, Paul, you're right. And actually, 85% of the votes that were cast in the last general election were cast for parties whose manifestos said they would take Britain out of the European Union and the single market. So how dare Adonis tell us that it's not undemocratic to sabotage Brexit. We've had a referendum and its confirmation in terms of what it stood for in a British general election. I'm getting pretty tired of all these people and even more tired of their endless tracks on Eurostar to meet Michel Barnier. I'm going to try and set that record a little bit straight on Monday if I can. Tony in Wimbledon is my next caller. Good evening, Tony. Hello, Nigel. Hello. So, what do you think about what Adonis and Blair have said today? Well, I mean, my view is, as you all know, the, the, the referendum just a, a year or so back was quite a closely, closely fought referendum. And it's fair to say that the country is quite divided. And I think, I think one thing that you should respect being a, being a champion of the people is someone who can actually speak to the, to the 48% who currently feel that they're not being represented. Mm-hmm. Do you not think that it's nice to have someone like a, a Donis or a Blair to, to speak for that 48%? Now, that's not saying that we don't respect the, the result, we don't respect the, the will of the people as a whole, but we need to talk about the people as a whole, so not okay. just one side of the argument, you know, it's a full argument. It's a perfectly valid uh, comment, Tony, in every way. Um, yes, of course, uh, minority views deserve representation and deserve to be heard and that's certainly true uh, i feel at the moment so, 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 so why would you tell them to shut up if they deserve to be heard because because uh, they, they no longer represent 48 percent tony as you well know uh, i they, don't well know that uh, yeah, I, I, I mean the polling on this is now incredibly clear uh, that actually support for a second referendum is down below 20 percent sort of 18 percent around about there fairly consistently is where it's been for the last few months um and, you know, those that now say, look, we took this decision, whether we liked it or not, let's just, you know, we've taken this fork in the road, let's just get on with it. And about 70% of the population say, look, let's just get on with it. So my point is that it isn't any longer 48% that are being represented. Uh, but what I will say, Tony, is this. The reason I'm saying please pipe down is because actually this view is now being overrepresented because we are hearing it day after day after day. And I actually think, not just because of how I feel about Brexit, I actually think the public are probably getting a little bit bored with it. So, so I, think, I think if you're saying, first of all, you didn't say pipe down. I think I heard you earlier actually say shut up. That, that's your quote. Yeah, shut up and, for a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, shut and, up and my, main, my main point would be actually that if you are really a true Democrat, you, you'd let the people speak. And yes, they've spoken in terms of they want to leave the they want to leave the EU, but how they leave, and I know I'm sounding like one of these politicians, but it's true how they leave. A true Democrat would let the people speak as to how they want to leave, and to say actually we can't have a third or a fourth referendum. That's wrong because really what you should be saying is any time there's enough groundswell for people to, to express their opinion, you should be championing that. And is, it, is it reasonable, to silence, Tony? And by trying to silence that, is it reasonable, you're Tony? Being you're, you're being undemocratic in your approach. Tony, is it reasonable you, to please, say... Can you acknowledge that? Is it reasonable to say, after a referendum result confirmed by 85% of voters at the last general election, and I repeat that point because it matters, is it reasonable and fair and democratic to say it should be sabotaged? Well, if you remember, if you listen to the words he said, he said he wants to do it... In, in the right way. He wants to follow Parliament's way of doing that. He is being true to himself. He, he never believed in the referendum, but he's not saying he's going to sabotage it illegally. He wants to do it by the due means. And you have to acknowledge that doing that in a way that allows the people to speak is perfectly democratic. And actually, if you go to say you don't want that to happen, you are being undemocratic. Can you accept that point? Tony, I, the point I accept... Can you accept that point? No, no, because what we've got here is a total imbalance of this argument and this debate. Because, because, the establishment in this country are pro-European Union. Who are the establishment? Are you the uh, establishment? Virtually every member of the House of Lords, the vast majority of the House of Commons, uh, you know, they are the political establishment of this country. They are overwhelmingly in favour of the European Union, and it's them we're hearing from, day in, day out. Had the result, Tony, gone the other way, had it been 52-48 the other way, anybody arguing for 
for a second referendum would be laughed out of town and we would not be not, having this well, debate. That's the point. It's not a second referendum. It's a different question. And I'll repeat my point. If you truly believe in the people, you will allow them to have a say. I mean, that's my... We point. did. And, Gen- and, Tony, and, and, we had a general and, and election you, you, on this. You can either agree with me or disagree with Tony, me. Tony, we had a if, general... If you do believe with the people in terms of what they want, once that deal is agreed, you will let them have a say. That's all the point I have to Tony, make. Tony, the people have spoken twice in 18 months. Once in a referendum and then in a general election. Do you, Tony, not accept that 85% of people in the general election, voted for parties that wanted to leave the single market. Nigel, I think you'll agree with me. The election was a lot more complex than just Brexit. People voted tactically. They didn't vote based on Brexit alone. If you really want the people to speak, you will let them have a view once we have a deal. It's as simple as that. And the fact that you cannot answer that question with a straight yes or no shows that you're actually being undemocratic. Tell you, we have made our decision. We have voted to leave. Exactly. And I, and I think how, it's, uh, we, how we leave is now the question. Well, well, how? and this is where people are trying to rewrite history, and this is where the single market comes into play, and this, Tony, is where the influence of the big multinational businesses, their virtual ownership of our political class, frankly, this is where it comes into play, because there is no, no question in my mind that every single leading player on both the Remain side and the Leave side in the referendum said, if we vote to leave, we are leaving the single market. Is Can I that... make one final point? Yes, of course. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, except for a very influential Leave campaigner, Dan Hanan. I remember him clearly saying, we will not leave the single market. And if you deny that, I can, I can share with you the evidence. And yeah. secondly, the second... Yeah, no, no, Tony, you said one final point. And we're, point. Tony, yeah. and we're out no, of time, no, no. and we're out of time, but I will say this to you. I did specifically say every leading leave and remain campaigner and dan hannan may be well known in spectator reading conservative circles but he's not known by joe public tony you had a fair crack of the whip there and tony you know who believes in the will of the people i believe in the will of the people too but they've spoken twice in the last 18 months and it's time we moved on you're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusive in LBC. It's 7.30 and time for the news with Thomas Watts. Serial sex attacker John Warboys, who police say is thought to have attacked more than 100 women, will be released from prison. The former taxi driver was jailed indefinitely in 2009. Theresa Mays apologised for delays to operations and admissions to hospitals as the NHS struggles to cope with pressures this winter. In England, there's been a sharp rise in bed occupancy and the number of patients waiting outside A&E in ambulances. And speaking to LBC, Lord Adonis has admitted he wants to sabotage Brexit. He resigned from his role advising the government on infrastructure last week, saying Theresa May had sided with UKIP and the Tory hard right. LBC weather, wind and rain in Scotland this evening, another band of heavy showers moving over southern England and Wales later, a low of six degrees. LBC travel, Camden Road in Lower Holloway is partly blocked northbound at Middleton Grove. A tree's been blown down. It's busier than normal on the North Circular with Tottenham playing West Ham at Wembley Stadium this evening. Heading away from town, the A13's down to two lanes at the Wennington Interchange for repairs to a collapsed manhole. And Buckingham Palace Road's very slow southbound between Victoria Square and Grosvenor Gardens, down to one lane for emergency repairs. On the tube, a faulty train is causing severe delays on the Circle Line, Hammersmith and City and Metropolitan Lines. And because of a points failure, there delays of up to half an hour on Chiltern Railways at Marylebone. LBC Travel, I'm Andy Ivey. This is LBC. Oh, this is the sound of a virgin holiday at Walt Disney World Resort, Florida. And this is the sound of it disappearing in our January sale. The Virgin Holiday Sale. It won't last forever. Book direct at your nearest Virgin Holiday store. Seize the holiday. Virgin Holidays. Sell now on. At all protected. We've been thinking about pruning. Not your peonies or your privet, but your cost of living. And how, from broadband to mobile phones, these days we're all looking for ways to trim our spending. And then we thought, couldn't we help you cut back on your biggest outgoing? And we thought, yes, we could. So we'll always try to help you remortgage to a better rate and save on your monthly repayments. Mortgages for how life is now. NatWest. We are what we do. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. At the third stroke, the time sponsored by Cunard will be... 
Any time you like. Time to stop. Time to relax. Time to indulge. Time to love. Showtime. Time for a voyage with Cunard. Get more for less with Mobalpa Kitchens. Stylish on the outside, clever on the inside, with up to 20% more storage space than a standard size kitchen unit. Order now to pay no VAT for a limited time only. Find your nearest Mobalpa Kitchen studio at mobalpa.co.uk. No matter what you want to achieve in the world of business, LBC is the place for you every Monday from 9 p.m. for the business hour. The best idea is to start with one product that one person buys. Some get an idea and they're trying to leap forward, jump into a manufacturer without even really knowing how much they're going to make, and then they make loads of mistakes. I'd much prefer someone to start at home and then find one customer that wants it. Join Clive Bull for the business hour every Monday evening from 9 with BT. Helping you to work where, when and how you want. This is LBC, the Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, Lord Adonis is one of many who has been to Brussels to meet the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, and I'm going there on Monday morning at 11 o'clock Brussels time. And I'm going to do my best to represent the view of the 17.4 million people, and indeed... Uh, most of those in the general election, too, who voted for parties that wanted us to leave not just the European Union, but the single market, and to take back control of our borders, our fisheries, and to have no more interference from foreign courts. And I want you, please, using the hashtag Ask Barnier to go to my Twitter account at Nigel underscore Farage or at LBC. Submit your questions that you would like to be asked directly to Michel Barnier. I'm going to pick the best three. I'll read them out on my show on Sunday, and I'll put them to the EU chief negotiator. And some early suggestions are coming in. Thomas from Runcorn. Does he wish the EU had given David Cameron proper concessions in his renegotiation? Well, actually, Thomas, if they'd done that, there wouldn't be any Ramonas, because they probably would have won the referendum. And Rob from South Shields says, uh, I should ask Barnier, are you trying to scare other countries from doing the same as Britain? And Rose, don't know where she's from, Rose says, why are you acting like the school bully? Well, there's some early suggestions. I'm not saying they're the ones that are going to get picked at the end of the day. I'm sure we're going to get an awful lot of suggestions. And some of them, like those, will be clean enough to read out on air. Um, let's um, have a little think about whether... Blair and Adonis are acting democratically. Adonis says he wants to sabotage Brexit. Blair is trying to get the Labour Party to change their position. My view is it's settled. It's a done deal. We had a referendum. It was confirmed in a general election. And actually, what these people are trying to do is fundamentally anti-democratic. But they have a voice in the media to do it because they are the establishment. I wonder what David in Kingston-upon-Thames makes of all of this. Good evening, David. Good evening, Nigel. Happy New Year. And to you. And um, again, another great programme. Well, thank you um, very much. David, your chance, because you're on air, on air on LBC, you can make it greater still. Make LBC great again. OK, well, uh, for me, it's very simple, Nigel. In fact, um, politically, I never used to follow any political parties. You're right. Then, when you came, you, you, as a person, came to the forefront of uh, UKIP, and your ideals about the European Union and what they stood for, I actually sat up and listened. Um, and I actually thought to myself, you know, this man is right. Why is it that our country is being run by a bunch of people that have never been voted in democratically and also that they can actually change our society that we live in with a stroke of a pen? So that got me worried. So I then decided that, I did, why you were leader of UKIP, I actually voted for UKIP. Mm -hmm. When you decided to step down, Nigel, I thought, great, job done. But then you got Blair. Mr Blair, who is, who was the Prime Minister of this great country, who decided 
why he was Prime Minister, decided to have enough. And he actually stepped down midterm. Is that somebody that you should trust? No, not at all. How is it that this man can step away from one of the most important jobs that we have on offer in this country to leave our country in the lurch like he did? So as far as I'm concerned, I would never trust that man. You wouldn't trust Blair. What about Lord Adonis? Uh, yeah, he was on with the, he was on Lord with Ian Adonis. Dale earlier on, and yeah. I thought, I have to oh, say, oh, David, oh. I thought that uh, I thought Ian Dale asked some really good questions because to get Adonis to admit that he wants to sabotage Brexit was was pretty good going, wasn't it? What do you, I mean, what would you say if if you met Lord Adonis, David, yeah. tonight in your local pub? What would you say to him? I, do you know, I I don't think I, I could actually look the guy in the face because I'd be more worried about this man on not just the, the views that he's got about Brexit and everything else, but other things that that, that, that House votes on. If you've got somebody like that is, that is willing openly to do and sabotage things quite openly on air, what other things has he actually sabotaged in the past that he feels is, is OK to do? But my final point is, Nigel, yep. is that I would say this. And everybody that asked me, oh, what, you know, why did you want to come out of Europe? It's very simple. I would then turn around and say to the guy you're going to see Monday uh, and ask him one simple question. Right. OK. If the British people decided to st- that they wanted to stay in Europe and be part of the European project, whatever it is, OK, would he and all the bureaucrats in Europe actually be willing to have a demo? democratic vote for them to be elected in their positions and i don't mean by other politicians well, i mean by individuals yeah. me my next door neighbor voting for who we want to sit on those seats then if he says well yeah okay then maybe I might believe him, but until then, no. I'm well, they had the chance, David, to do this. They had their own constitution convention, you know, back in the earlier part of this century. And I argued then that if they fully democratised the European Union, if they made a United States of Europe, like a USA, where there were great powers resting with individual countries and some powers at the centre, that they might democratically carry the day. I wouldn't have supported it, but they might have democratically carried the day. They turned their backs on it, David. It is the unelected commission that is the government of Europe, and that is a fact. Anyone out there think I'm wrong? Call 0345 973 Your messages coming in. If we had another referendum and leave one, would Adonis shut up then? Asks Yvonne from Telford. I don't think so. I think they are genuinely obsessed. I think we, the great unwashed, have driven some of them simply round the bend. Nigel, what would you have done had remained one by 4%? Would you have campaigned vociferously to still leave the EU as you think the result to remain was not in the UK's interest, says Levent? Uh, I, do you know what? There wouldn't really have been any point because there'd have been no prospect of getting another referendum on this for at least another generation. There would have been, and I said at the time, some in the Tory party I felt would have been completely uh, irreconcilable to it. I would have hated it, but there wouldn't have been much I could do about it. And if I'd stood up and called for a second referendum, there would have been very loud media laughter and virtually no coverage at all. The only reason we're being subjected to this, it's because the establishment still hate the result and they simply want to overturn it. Uh, we have had a referendum. Uh, we were bullied by the government. Obama told us not to do it. The Prime Minister told us not to do it. The CBI told us not to do it. The EU told us not to do it. But we did it. So now please make it happen, says Ian. What does Martin, a first-time caller from Leicester, make of all of this? Good evening, Martin. Um, all I'd like to say, Nigel, is for the last 18 months we've been browbeaten by the establishment. Mm. We've got people coming out telling us, you know... It, as far as I'm concerned, it was a mini revolution. People had got fed up with the establishment. They got fed up completely with it. You look at the Labour Party. The Labour Party, Tony Blair's coming out. The Labour Party stands for the working class. How many MPs in this country come from a working class background? Quite. Who, who represent Labour. And what I'm trying to say here is that you've got Tony Blair jumping the bandwagon again. You've got this Lord Adonis who comes out with words like, like he has done today. I can't understand if they're attention-seeking, if they're trying to bring attention to themselves. Tony Blair decided to pack in as Prime Minister. 
His sell-by date is gone. No disrespects to him. At first, I thought he was great. But what I'm saying to them all is, it was a mini revolution. People have got, I can remember you being on the Thames when Bob Geldof... <laughs> so could I. Go you. I. No, but I can remember that. And I'm go, Bob Geldof, where do you come from? That is just your answer. And all I can say is to them, all of them is that all we keep getting is told that it's a disaster, it's this, it's that. All I can say is, I'm going back to Donald Trump now, I'll tell you why Donald Trump's economy is doing well, because he's a businessman. He's been brought up as a businessman. Yeah. How, many, how, yeah. how many of them politicians are businessmen? Oh, look, Martin, very few of them have ever had a proper job in their lives. Hardly any have ever worked in the private sector, or certainly not in anything as grubby as business as they see it. The other reason, of course, what, that Trump's America is doing so well economically is because he's optimistic. He keeps talking it up. And all we've got is a constant diet of misery coming from a huge chunk of our establishment, not just from Labour and the Lib Dems, but from quite a few voices in the Conservative Party as well. And Martin, thank you for reminding me of the Battle of the Thames last year with myself and Bob Geldof. And I debated fishing, Martin, the other week um, on my Sunday show. We had an hour talking about whether it was time, whether we should leave the common fisheries policy as quickly as possible. And on a day when... On a day when Michael Gove has set a way forward for British agriculture, fishing is still being completely ignored. And I'll tell you, Martin, we invited Sir Bob Geldof onto the show to talk about fisheries, and I'm sad to say he refused the invitation. Martin, I thank you very much indeed. Martin, a first-time caller there from Leicester. On Facebook, JC says, The Leavers didn't vote tactically. They voted to leave the EU. Right out of the EU, and nothing less. Well, JC, I think that's the way the vast majority of Leave voters felt. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.45. <laughs> Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. There's a warning today that increasing the living wage will mean a loss of jobs as more workers are replaced by robots. Is that a reason to keep wages down? Clive Bull on LBC. Miss Grady, come on through. GP and nurse appointments are now available in your area during the evening and on weekends. To book an appointment, contact your practice or visit nhs.uk slash gpaccess for more information. Your NHS. Here for you, for longer. At the Cobb, selected packs of British meat, including mince, are now two for £5. So whether it's your favourite spag bowl, shepherd's pie or even homemade burgers, you can settle down to some good old-fashioned comfort food at a good old-fashioned price. Another New Year deal from the Co-op. Participating stores only. See sticker packs in store. Ambitious and determined to succeed. Study for a two-year degree at GSM London for just £12,000 this February and make your bold dreams happen. Accelerated degrees are a great way to progress your career faster. And they're awarded by Plymouth University. Enroll now at our Greenford and Greenwich campuses and follow your dreams of success. Act fast. Offer ends January 15th. Search Have Bold Dreams at GSM London. Special offer. Conditions apply. We've travelled, been there, shared rum with the locals. That mountain was near impossible to climb, but we got to the top for sunrise. We've looked over the edge of the infinity pool into the valley below and floated above herds of elephants in a hot air balloon. We can tell you about it because we've travelled it. The Kuoni sale is now on, so pop into one of our beautiful stores for a down-to-earth chat. At Kuoni, our experience makes yours. At all protected. Even if you only employ one person, you have to provide a workplace pension. It's the law. Get to know your responsibilities with help from the pensions regulator. Visit workplacepensions.gov.uk. At Honda, when we have one good idea, we keep going until we find another one. It could be forward collision warning if you get too close, or lane departure warning if you wander left or right. Some ideas give you more Honda for your money, like up to a thousand pound test drive incentive and five years complimentary servicing. Discover these and even more great offers at your nearest participating dealer before the 31st of January. Terms and conditions apply. Honda, the power of dreams. I don't want to redecorate my house. I want to sell it. Although, I must admit, it may be time to finally take down my WAM posters and actually wallpaper. But thanks to Property Rescue, you won't need to. You can exchange contracts within 48 hours regardless of its condition. 
So, no need to redecorate. And don't forget to ask about their cash advance. Get that just sold feeling with Property Rescue. Fast forward to sold at propertyrescue.co.uk. The Nigel Farage Show. Text 84850. Well, using the hashtag Ask Barnier, uh, already 400 of you have sent in questions that you want me to ask Michel Barnier at 11 o'clock Brussels time on Monday morning. Um, and I've no doubt there'll be a lot of those over the next few days, a flood of them. And the best three I will read out on my show on Sunday morning. I'm here on Sundays from 10 until 12. A story today that really has made me very, very angry is the story over John Warboys, the former London cab driver who back in 2009 was given a life sentence for one rape, five sexual assaults and 12 charges of drugging women. And because he had that life sentence, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Keir Starmer at the time, now Sir Keir Starmer, uh, decided that the further 75 women who came forward with complaints against him, that they that he, he would not be charged on those further 75 because he'd been given life. And today, a panel have decided that he's going to be freed from prison. And when you think, there's a hundred women here made very, very serious allegations against this man, John Warboys, with quite a few of them proven in court. I mean, does anyone seriously think that he's changed as a person over the course of the last few years, that our country is better and safer with him back on the street? I think it is absolute lunacy. And I tell you what, if ever there was a case where life should mean life to make this country safer... I think the John Warboys case is it. I think we have gone literally soft in the head. And I wonder sometimes whether Lord Adonis and Tony Blair haven't had their mind altered slightly by the Brexit result. It's as if they've been driven mad. How dare we, the ordinary people, upset the apple cart and this wonderful European gravy train that they're all so in love with. And I'm asking you, what message would you have for Adonis or for Blair. I'm going to Dover in Kent to ask David that very question. David, good evening. Hey, Mr Farish, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, yeah, I'm ringing you from Dover, which yep. is, to some extent, uh, Brexit Central, slightly south of your wannabe seat in Senate. <laughs> yep. Um, I think Adonis and Blair are doing the right thing, personally. Um, we had a guy on earlier, Tony, who talked about the 47 percent as opposed to the 51.6 percent um i'm just looking back on your history because you've been talking about people telling untruths and so on and being obsessed on the 17th of may 2016 so a week or so before the referendum you actually said and it's reported it was reported widely at the time, you said there would be an unstoppable demand for a rerun of the EU referendum if Remain wins by a narrow margin. Well, David, what I was talking about was whether the, whether the referendum had been conducted on free and fair lines, and I was asking my attitude towards the leaflet, the £9 million that David Cameron had spent, uh, you know, completely... Uh, contrary to any sense of fair play or decency. And there would have been an outcry and an uproar over it. But, David, the truth of it is, it would have gone nowhere. Because the, even those Tory MPs who had broken ranks with their own parties to, to, to support Leave, most of them, bar a handful, would have fallen back into line. And, and, and David, I promise you, I absolutely promise you, that 18 months on, from a 4% Remain win, we would not be debating Britain's potential membership or otherwise of the European Union. We're only debating it because the establishment can't accept the result. No, I think we're debating it because David Cameron very, very foolishly um, set up the idea of having a referendum in order to placate um, a bunch of hardline Tory establishment members because that is after all what they are I mean look at Jacob rees look at John Redwood they're not exactly the man in well, the street are they? Well the point is David they were defecting from the establishment to the insurgent UKIP that was Cameron's problem and it was happening to him in quite a big way uh, you know and he, he genuinely feared he genuinely feared that, that, that you know quite a tranche of the Parliamentary Conservative Party would simply walk out and join UKIP and he had 
as far as he saw it, to stop that happening at all odds. He offered the referendum. He believed by doing it, he would kill off UKIP, kill off my voice, kill it off as an issue, and actually, actually what happened was it further legitimised it. But that's the past, David. So, talking about today, you know, do you accept, David, that the 48% is now a substantially smaller portion of the electorate? No. You don't? No. Oh, really? No. So, you, you, whatever you gov say, successive opinion polls, and polls saying that fewer than one in, you know, fewer than one in five people want a second referendum on membership, you still think that, that, that 48% would vote tomorrow for us, to, for us to rejoin, effectively, the European Union? No, I don't Union. think they'd vote in the referendum. Um, I think you're right there. I think the British public would second what Cameron said when he said a, a referendums can become neverendums. I think he was right. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think a general election will see the Tories out once and for all, and with them, their hard Brexit plans. Well, what about Jeremy Corbyn's heart? I mean, did you vote Labour, David? Um, I did vote Labour, yes. So you voted for a party that wanted to leave the European Union, leave the single market, and bring back proper border controls. Why on earth did you do that? Uh, because I'm pretty sure that the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn personally, are playing a very clever game here. They're playing the game where they're saying, yes, OK, we agree with Brexit. But when it comes to it... I'm pretty sure that the Labour Party, once it comes to power, mm. will look again. Oh, right. Oh, that's good, isn't it? So, so I'm pretty sure that... Oh, great. So just, just, just lie to the public, basically. Uh, well, basically do what you did and what most of the Leave campaigners did. I'm sorry, David. I, we, we, we do this um, every week, two or three times a week, with, with people who are keen Remainers and desperately upset with the result, and I will do it with you again tonight. Please tell me one lie I told during the referendum. <laughs> what you told, you put a big poster up, didn't you, saying that um, all these migrants, immigrants were coming from Syria, etc., which was just bullshit. Sorry? I'm sorry. David, I'm sorry, and David's language there fell off the edge, um, but, but over one million people came to Germany in one year, and some were coming from Syria, most weren't actually. Interestingly, that migrant crisis was sold as people fleeing the civil war in Syria. Fewer than 20% of them came from Syria. They were coming actually from countries all over the world. Nigel, so now the former Prime Minister wants the people to have a referendum on the final deal to leave the EU, but never offered one on the Lisbon Treaty. And this shows up the attitude of the political classes, says Tony. Tony, we, they've been offering us referendums for years and years and years without the intention of ever actually delivering, and the Labour Party wriggled out of giving us a referendum on, on the Lisbon Treaty. And I have to say, I thought that was pretty disgraceful. Uh, my last caller of the evening, time is running out fast, is Craig from Clapham. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Nigel. Pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to talk to you. What's your message to Adonis and Blair? Oh, for goodness sake, they need to give it a rest. Look, you know what it is, Nigel? It's, you know, the establishment have never listened to the people. It's always been about big business, listening to the EU, incorporating what they dictate and imposing that on the people. Now we've actually had a chance to actually have a vote on something significant and have ownership on the direction of travel we as a country want to go in, which goes against the establishment and big business. Big, big business. Mm. They, they simply can't handle it. That's, that's the fact. And the thing is, I think, you know, when you look at politicians, they get elected, they get into power government, and they never deliver. They always fail us. Um, so this is a real shock to their system, because they're having to deliver something that we want. Yeah, you know? and, I, and, Craig, and Craig, don't you think that actually they're beginning to look a bit ridiculous? Because, because right across Europe... We're seeing Eurosceptic parties of the left and the centre of the right that are growing. We're seeing a British public that are beginning to accept that we've taken this decision and we should get on with it. Aren't they beginning, Craig, to look obsessive and ridiculous? They, they really are. And, and do you know what? I hate the hypocrisy when they keep saying we respect the democratic uh, will of the people, we respect the vote. No, they don't. If they respected the vote, I know. What, they would, what they would do is they'll get behind Theresa May, regardless of the party politics, and do whatever's necessary to get the best deal for the country. And all they're doing at the moment is just undermining every single uh, step of the way, and it's so frustrating. Yes, and and I just want to wait, make one more really quick point. Go on, go on quickly. Um, 
the, other, the other thing that I just want to make, this is why Trump is getting a battering from some of these people, because he is delivering on what he promised. And I don't agree with a lot of things that he's doing, but he's delivering. He's delivering. Know? Craig, and, I've and got to end it there. I thank you very much for your call. And you're right. Love Trump or hate him, he is delivering. He's upbeat. He's positive about the US and the economy. And here we are talking down, not just the economy, but actually damaging, damaging... The, the ability of the British government to renegotiate a proper deal. Now, your questions using the hashtag Ask Barnier. Hi, Nigel. Ask him how much the UK should charge the EU for them to access the massive UK market and what tariff we should put on imports. To remind you, I'll be going to see the European Union's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, at 11am Brussels time on Monday morning. I want your questions. It's easy. Go to Twitter at Nigel underscore Farage or at LBC. The best questions will be selected i'll read three of them out on sunday morning i'm here i'm back on sunday at 10 coming up tonight at 10 it's nick abbott in for ian collins but up next it's clive bull nigel thank you at nine it's the property hour your questions answered by property expert and lawyer russell conway and we'll get russell's view on the current homelessness problem also later london cabbie